Hello friends, this video on D and F block elements part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to learn the position of D and F block elements in the periodic table. We'll know the electronic configurations of this D block elements also called transition elements and F block elements also called inner transition elements. We'll appreciate the stability of various oxidation states and we'll try to understand the stability of this oxidation state in terms of standard electrode potential. We'll describe the preparation properties of uh, important compounds like K2Cr2O7, KMN4, potassium dichromate, potassium permanganate. We'll understand the characteristics of D and block, F block elements and we'll also try to understand the general trend. We'll describe the properties of F block elements and try to give a comparative account of lanthanides and actinides. We'll try to compare these two series with respect to their electronic configuration, oxidation states and chemical behavior. This is what we'll study in this chapter. So let's start the chapter. If you see this periodic table, this is a normal periodic table. This is pretty long. You want to squeeze it. So what we can do is this part, the one in the blue, we can put it down and we get this normal periodic table. This is a very long, long form periodic table. Little unconvenient because it occupies more space. So the part in the blue, the elements in the blue, blue is squeezed down and you get this table. If you see, uh, we have 57 atomic number here and then from here you start here 58 and then similarly actinides 89 and then you have actinium 89 and then you have thallium 90. So this is how it is. There's a connection. Just to squeeze it, this part is down. Okay. Now if you see in this periodic table, we have this part was my D block and this part was my F block. D block is nothing but the block where the last electron enters the D orbital. F block is the one where the last electron enters F orbital. So based on the last electron entry, we classify the elements as S block where the last electron enters S orbital, P block where the last electron enters P orbital, D block where the last electron enters D orbital, F block where the last electron enters F orbital. So if you see the D block transition metals as per our design, these are my D block elements. Okay, also called transition metals. Uh, please note this these three are not called transition metals, but they are D block elements. Why? Because for transition metal, the definition is that it should have incomplete filled. D orbital. We'll talk about that later. But this understand that these are not transition. Why? Because if we talk about the electronic configuration of these, you'll get D10. D is filled. If D is, is filled, they are not considered as transition metals. So if you see this D block element, there are a lot of uh, metals like uh, metals which we use zinc, copper, nickel, iron, and a lot of precious metal like. Uh, gold, platinum, silver. So it has a lot of metals which we use. In fact, we'll see that the valence electron, valence electron is in two orbital. We'll see that. See in, in these S block and P block, we have seen that the valence electron is only in the S orbital or P orbital. But here we'll see, this is the energy difference between the uh, D orbital and the penultimate orbital that is an orbital before that D orbital will be less. So the valence electron will be in these two orbitals. We'll understand that. So it shows variable oxidation state and they act as catalyst. So they have color ions, they form complex, they have magnetic properties, they are, they are hard, they have high melting boiling point. They are typically silvery, shiny, good conductor of heat and electricity. They are malleable and ductile also if you talk about uh, zinc or any of the element. And they are typically found in um, compound state because they are reactive. Few of them are found in the pure state also. Copper, silver, gold. Uh, copper, silver and gold. They are typically found in pure form. 
but others were actually formed in uh, compound form because they react with the atmospheric oxygen to form oxide. And few of few of them are very magnetic. For example, iron, cobalt, nickel are strongly magnetic. So we will we'll study all about these things uh, in this chapter, right? Just understand that D block elements are nothing but my group three to group twelve is my D block. Okay, and this last electron enters this outermost D orbital. Okay. If you talk about the F block, this, this hole is my F block. And we have lanthanides, actinides, this is 4F and this is 5F. Actually, if you see, this is 4F and 5F. We will talk about this. Lanthanides and actinides in details. So by definition, F block is nothing but the elements where the last electron enters, last electron enters outermost F orbit. Okay. So again, if you note that in this case, what is the group of these elements? So if you see all these are taken from here, right? 57 to 58, 8 to 9 to 9. All these are part of group 3. See, after this, there was no group increase. That means all these elements are part of group 3 and that is a little strange. So many elements only part of group 3. Okay. These are all part of group 3 elements. As I have told, these elements are my lanthanides from 58 to 71 and these elements from 90 to 103 are my actinide. See, there are two series of inner transition metals and they are called inner transition. Now the question comes is why should we study D and F block elements? See, if you see all this development we see around us is because of iron. The big big buildings you see, the big flyovers you see, it is all because of iron, right? So this iron and steel has changed our life a lot. And this iron is part of D block elements. Also, if you see the wires that is used, copper wires for, for transmitting electricity, is again, the copper is a D block element. A lot of places where we use D block elements, the utensils in the kitchen is typically iron or steel. Steel is made out of iron. You must be knowing that, right? So these are all D block elements. If we talk about the alloys, brass and bronze, which has such a good properties, these alloys are also made from D block elements. Talk about battery. Battery has zinc, nickel, cadmium, and these are all D block elements. Zinc, nickel, cadmium. Coins. Typically, the coins are made of silver, gold, copper. These elements, I'm talking about silver, gold, copper, are all D block elements. D block elements are very good catalyst. We have seen nickel catalyst, hydrogenation. Uh, in Haber's process, we use iron catalyst. B2O5 is also uh, used as catalyst. So they act as very, very good catalyst. There are so many reasons for that. They have, they can have variable oxid oxidation state. They are small in size. We'll talk about that. Let's understand that in industry, catalyst plays a major role. It saves a lot of money. And these D block elements are good catalyst. Nuclear reactor, a lot of F block elements and D block elements are actually used as nuclear fuel, uranium, right? Thorium is also a more example. There are a lot of radioactive elements in these groups. In the photography industry, this is widely used. In photography, you use light sensitive AGBR, silver bromide. And the silver is nothing but my D block elements. So it has a lot of applications. There are a lot of applications of D and F block elements. Primarily the D block elements in the development, iron we know. No development is possible without iron. Right? So since D block elements has so much application in our day to day life, it is good that we understand the properties and the trends of D and F block 
elements. As I told, we'll define what is transition metals. So the definition says the transition metal is one which has incomplete fill D orbital. Please note it has incomplete fill D orbital in the ground state or any of its oxidation state. So the D orbital as we all know can have at the max 10 electron. So the number of electron in D if it is can range from 1 to 10. So definition says if it is D1 to 9 it is a transition metal if it is D10 it is not a transition metal and when we are talking about the ground state or any of its oxidation state. So with these definition my zinc, cadmium and mercury is not a transition metal because zinc, cadmium and mercury if you write the electronic configuration actually will I'll show you it is D10 talk about the zinc it is 3d10 4s2 if you talk about the oxidation state the common oxidation state of zinc is zinc 2 plus in that case the oxidation state is this in both the case the zinc has filled d orbital and that's why zinc is not considered as transition metal but if you talk about copper Copper, the electronic configuration is 3D 10 4S1. We'll, we'll tell you why it is. If you see, this has filled D orbital, but if you talk about the common oxidation state of copper, that is 3D Cu2 plus, this will have oxidation state of I mean, electronic configuration of this. So, if you see, it has 9 electron, it is half filled. So, metals which has incompletely filled D orbital in the ground state or any of its oxidation state. Right? Either ground state or any of its oxidation state, they are called transition metal. And with this definition, all these D blocks element except zinc, cadmium and mercury, they are regarded as transition metals because you know, in only in these three metals or elements, the electronic configuration is always such way that the d orbitals are always filled even in the ground state or in their common oxidation state okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again